On today's episode of Watch Chargo, we are back with my 2002 Harley V-Rod. And yesterday, we spent a lot of money. Today, we ride it. What is going on, guys? I am Watch Chargo, and like I said, we are here with my V-Rod, and there is quite a bit of work left to do from yesterday. Now we got really far yesterday cleaning up the engine, removing all the old LEDs, getting the new grips on, all new chrome caps on these switches. But I had to stop yesterday because I knew I had just finished assembling all this and I had to tear it all back apart to replace the chrome caps on those switches. We wanted it all to look nice and uh, part of that means getting all of that apart and replacing the chrome caps with chrome caps. Uh, I'm doing that today. It's going to take quite a while to do that. We've got the air box ready to go on. I just need to uh, stick it back in and hook everything up. Here's the new gasket. Kind of nice. Harley put little pins on there that hold the gasket in place to make it easy to install. I thought this was going to be one of those just kind of sticking on there blind things based on the one that was stuck on the intake. Not so. This is actually very well engineered and I can't wait to put it back together. Here in just a few minutes, we'll be putting the air box back on. I'm going to spend probably 30 minutes getting all those switches moved. Obviously, I have to come in here and pull all these screws out, remove all the switches. Uh, there's one set for the bottom and another set for the top. Those have to slide out and be removed as well. Then take all those caps off, put all the new ones on, and then put it all back together. So that's uh, time consuming. You don't want to see that. Let's skip right to the good part. All right. Controls are back together. Looks really good. And now it's time for our new air filter here because the air box is back on. Obviously the air box, you got six um, hex bolts in there. I can't remember what size they are, but very easy to tell. Um, it holds everything together and holds the velocity stacks on. It's kind of fun assembling that thing. It's, uh, it's definitely tricky, but we got that done. This filter is so much better. That K&N was definitely, I could see light through part of the K&N, like where the ribs had just gone to nothing. So this should just drop on. Oh man, this fits so much better. So much better. And we can put the new, the airbox lid on. And then we can move on to trying to make our clutch work. This is all we need to do up here. Honestly, we could put the airbox cover back on if we want it. But I'm gonna wait till we bleed the clutch. Clutch is coming up next and those mirrors and I should be able to ride this thing for the first time and not be horrible. I mean, <laughs> that first time was a wreck. Oh, I just finished adjusting the shifter too. Now you can see the shift linkage down here is straight up and down. And that put this shifter right in line with the brake on the other side, instead of being all the way down here, which is where it was before. So I think I'll be able to shift the bike now, as long as we can make the clutch work. The clutch is the key now. So we've got three five millimeter Allen heads right here. These are just a cover to make the clutch slave pretty. And there's your clutch slave. And where's the bleeder at? I think this is the bleeder on it. It's kind of interesting. It's, it has to be. Well, uh, that's unfortunate. I thought it was gonna be easy, easy. Maybe I'll just take the clutch slave out and look at it. There's really no reason not to. Okay, other than the fact that it's really in there. Wow, those are tight. No wonder the impact couldn't break them. This should just slide straight out. And it does. And I'm gonna say that the only way to bleed it's that screw. I don't see anything else there. We'll put the uh, bolts back in and lead this thing through there. So I've got the cover off the clutch reservoir here and strangely, the fluid looks great. If you take a look at that, um, the old fluid was not black. It looks like it had been recently changed and it had been changed to dot four or something like that. It was not purple. So we are not dealing with the old dot five. I bought that just to replace it if that's what was in it, but it wasn't what was in it. So we're gonna keep it with the good stuff. Motul RBF 700 is going this bike, the good, good. So I'm gonna fill it up just a little bit more, put the cap on it, and we'll move down there to actually bleed the slave. I went ahead and backed the screw all the way out. The screw has a little O-ring on it. There's no bleeder. This should really have a bleeder. I think the later model V-Rod's got one. This literally has a screw. So I backed the screw all the way out and then I had Darrell slowly squeeze the clutch lever and hold it. And it blew all the fluid out like we would expect. And then I just shoved the screw back in as fast as I could and tightened it down. Now, I don't know if that's gonna get it, I'm hoping that's our bleed method for not having a bleed screw. So I'm gonna snug it up. It's a very, very tight. And the best thing I found to get in there was the little flathead on a socket. 
and I also covered everything with rags to try to protect it. So let's see if we've got a clutch now. I guess we just start this thing up and uh, see if it's any better. All right, please work clutch. We're gonna find out real fast. No, that's not how you start this. Well, it seems like I can reliably find neutral, which is the key here. There really is no back brake at all. Like it, it does absolutely nothing. So I think I might look at bleeding that real quick. I mean, I don't know why. I've got all new everything coming for that. I definitely have some fluid. I'm gonna put just another hair in this reservoir to replace what we took out. We're a little below the fill line there. So I'll fill it back up to the little fill level line, put the cap back on. I also cleaned out the little sight glass so you can actually use it. Uh, these get dirty and then you can't see anything. So a lot of cleaning on the cover. Let's fill it back up and hopefully the clutch is way better. Oof. Yeah, putting our airbox cover back on. I know everybody wants to see these dents come out and it's 50-50 if we're gonna try to get them out. I'm, I'm not sold on getting these dents out. Airbox covers back on. As far as the PDR on this, we'll see if we can find a PDR guy that wants to tackle the airbox cover. Uh, I know everybody wants to see it fixed, but honestly, there's like, there's probably no way to fix this. Um, everybody buys new ones, but they're like $800. So that's, that's just insane. And it's not gonna bother me. I don't see that one, right? Looking forward. I don't think it cares about the kickstand. It hasn't yet. What about in gear though? Uh, okay. Smart that they do that. That's uh. Well, I mean, this bike just doesn't do it though. slave and we had this thing uh, working again so the fluid all looked great otherwise I would have just kept right on bleeding uh, now it's time for some mirrors so the McLaren's going up in the air over there but over here we're loosening up these terrible fittings that were on here oh man look at all the water in them these like collect water very unfortunate all right uh, now we can just pop off these nuts here and that should drop the mirror and this is like a pass-through adapter that lets you mount those lights on the mirrors. Some lock nuts, lots of cleaning to do. But there you go, we're ready to switch over to the Harley mirrors that, that easy. Man, these were rough. Mm -hmm. It's gonna completely change them. First, it looks really good with no mirrors. It like lowered the bike a little bit. Gotta love that. Let's put the new ones on and see what it looks like. Let me do some cleaning. These are the Harley Davidson profiles. And uh, this, like I said, was just something I had to do. Wow, I love this setup. This is a lot better than what was on there, but. Nice chrome hardware. Open up some mirrors. Open up the safe. <laughs> All I can think of is the... Every, somebody got the, uh, there's no going back from yesterday. I was like, yeah. The open up the safe one was the funniest from the, uh, what was that, the baseball game? Was it? Where they, they started playing that instead of the national anthem. Oh, yeah, that, that was messed up. It. That was messed up. <laughs> they cut it off. <laughs> I think that's acceptable. But, I mean, let's get everybody's opinion real quick. Some design. Whoop. Okay, instead of the flames, how do the profiles look? The bigger. What do you guys think? Yeah. I, I'm seeing some yeses. Yeah, the other one's a little bit more swinging. Uh, oh, this one's a little more swingy? Swingy. Oh, because I haven't put the hardware on. <laughs> yeah, it's a little broken looking. Yeah. Um, no, I think this one keeps like the swooping lines of the V-Rod, and that was like my big thing doing the mirror here. And it's not too high. I think it's a little too high. I wish it was right here, but it's not too, too high. I mean, you might have to do less of the 
Yeah, you won't be able. You, that's the thing is you'll actually be able to use these mirrors, which yeah. is kind of cool. So. Huh? Yeah, when I was sitting down, I was like, I don't know how you do that. You can't use these. These are worthless. These are like a joke uh, to keep the cops happy. Uh, honestly, then the, on sport bikes, you know, we always do the same joke where we just put the one, the three inch mirror right here and you can't see at all, but it's legal, you know. So that's what these are for. Anytime you do a flame delete, it's a good idea. Any flame delete, yeah, I'm with you. Flame delete all the way. Well, the Harley looks incredible compared to what it did look like and we have done so much work to get here now the mirrors obviously pretty simple uh it's a self-explanatory thing take the old ones off put the new ones on spend a good bit of time adjusting them and trying to get the angle right so it looks good we've got the mirrors we've got the grips we've got the chrome switch caps replaced uh and of course i needed the new one for the turn signal the turn signal works it starts reliably new airbox gasket on there throttle is much 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 better it will shift through the gears and it will find neutral now, but it still seems like I have a little bit of clutch drag. And like, how do you fight that clutch drag out of this thing? I got no air out of the bleeder. Really, I just need to see if I can put a bleeder in there. So we'll see, I'm gonna go ride it around. I left the cover off of here so we could keep working on it if we wanted to. And then we spent a ton of time, well, I spent a ton of time polishing a, a lot of the surface chrome here, the stuff that jumps out uh, when you're first looking at the bike. So a lot of this has been quickly polished with just a rag and some metal polish. Uh, headlight was loose, the headlight was pointed way up in the air. So we got that re-aimed to a, you know, a point where it's not horrific. It was lighting up the treetops going down the road. So we've uh, checked that out, got the headlight sorted. The shock bolt on the back was backing out. I noticed I, I wiggled the shock and it was a little bit loose. I've been polishing all this chrome, you know. So uh, I went through, tightened that up. I found a few other bolts. Yeah, the headlight bolt was loose. So many things were loose on this bike, but I think we've got them all. I think we've got it all. Uh, the PCV system was put back together. I don't think that was actually on there before. And I think we're ready to go ride this. I went ahead and put some oil back in it since it's been leaking out. Just another quart of 20W50 to nail it on the dipstick until we take all of this apart and put in our brand new clutch in uh, three weeks or something like that. So we're getting close and at least I can ride it now. Uh, I think putting more oil in it means it's gonna leak more though. That's kind of a, an unfortunate side effect. But yeah, I can't really ride it without that. So let's get it out on the road, see how it rides, take it to the gas station. I, I think it's gonna be a ripper. First ride with almost everything done. I am excited. I'm going straight to the gas station to finally fill this thing up. <laughs> No more lights on the dash. It's full of fuel now. It rides amazing. Let me tell you how big of a difference having a working throttle makes. It rocks. And it was shifting fine. The clutch is actually releasing. Riding it a little bit kind of answered a lot of questions for me. It's much, much, much better. It feels like a motorcycle you can use now. I'm still, I don't really want to ride it anymore until the tires come in, which obviously means we have to wait till the brakes come in. And uh, I mean, these tires are gone. If you take a look at this, there's no tread left in the middle. So I took it out on the highway. It's a super windy day. And the front end felt like it was washing back and forth out on the road. And of course, these are cracked all the way down the center and cracked in every direction. People are still in the comments being like, you shouldn't do burnouts on those tires. You're so wasteful. I'm like, what is wrong with you? These tires are gonna kill somebody. That's a I need to kill these tires before they kill me. It's one or the other, and I don't plan on losing. 4215. Well, that's actually not that old. I expected they were even worse with the cracking. You usually don't see cracking this bad, but then again, this was just parked outside its entire life. Um, but yeah, what's that, seven years old now? Still a really, really old tire. I think we could rate the improvement on this bike in an order of magnitude. Also, you can see incredibly well out of the mirrors. Uh, previously, you couldn't see anything at all, but now you can see just fine. So uh, also these are all convex mirrors. The, the, both sides of these mirrors have that objects and mirror closer than they appear. So if you take a look at this, like you can look in the mirror and you can see almost that entire Mustang. It is a very, very wide mirror. It's pretty tough. My angle here, I can see the whole Mustang. I can see you from right here. Yeah, it's a crazy mirror. You can really see everything. And I actually love that. Almost all the aftermarket mirrors I've ever bought have been 
pretty worthless, you know, and these work out great. Probably because they're factory. Also, there's been a bunch of hate about where I bought these parts, which obviously like there is no real aftermarket for these, maybe the air filter. So I bought the OE one because I wanted a paper filter. There's probably a Wix out there or something, but what it's like 40 bucks. I mean, there's no real savings there. The brakes is tricky since they transition the V-Rod brakes and you have to buy the ones for the 06. And honestly, like why not just buy the Brembo parts and have the right stuff on the bike? So I don't think I really wasted a dime yesterday and there was no way to get a better deal. Um, the stuff that I could get a better deal on, I bought on eBay and it's not here and won't be here for a long time. As far as I'm concerned, there's really no way to save more money than this and it is fully, fully sorted when I'm done with it and everything's new. I don't think there could be a better outcome than this. And whoever gets this is basically getting an 06 for kind of 02 money. So it's gonna be a huge win and I'm gonna ride it around for a while too because now I love riding it. Let's shove this thing over in the Harley parking. <laughs> We got the street glide, we got the ultra classic or whatever this thing is, electro glide. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep calling it ultra classic forever. There you have it, tons of the V-Rod has been fixed. We got a few more things coming up and then it's gonna be just the greatest cruiser, I think. I was rocking it earlier and I really do love riding the bike. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjerry.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time it's all that little stuff that we spent all this time putting together the that's what really eats your lunch on these things and bleeding this it is really weird to bleed this clutch it sure looks like the later ones have bleeders and why doesn't this one have a bleeder what were you thinking harley they weren't <laughs> facts <laughs> and then we polished so much stuff today so. ah this still needs washed and then we'll start over on the polish get the wheels it's gonna look crispy. Yeah, it's gonna look good. Tighten down all the bolts that were falling out of the bike. Good times.